Well, today you join us on Manoeuvres, folks. We're on our way to London, and we've got Tracy with us. And her chiddlies. Yeah, you all right, baby? We've got about eight minutes to get onto the platform, folks, so we'll see you in a... You always want to go wee, Sharon. It's a busy day, Sharon, isn't it, the station? 10 o'clock, folks. Well, that's our train, Sharon, isn't it? Never seen the station so busy. Must be sort of just off a of rush hour. There you go. Have you relieved yourselves, ladies? They've not put the zones up where we've got to stand. Where are we going, baby? We're coach C. C? Well, we've only got a few minutes to go, Sharon, so uh, we've got to know where we've got to stand. There's so many people, Sharon. We're not used to this show, are we? And we're not first class today, folks. It's shocking! Shocking! Tracy, I've never known it's a pack. Oh, we've been big. Got your, got what? Can we just get by while you're arguing? Really? <laughs> no, so I don't think they're arguing. Nah, terrible. I'll try You're right, you're going to sit there then? Yeah. Of course she has, that's no problem. So it's very chaotic, folks, so uh, we're just going to settle down, enjoy our journey if we can. We'll see you in a minute. What was that you said, Tracy? I said you can tell the difference in Scotland on the way down for the kids. It went a metal. What was that you said, Tracy? <laughs> on the way down from Scotland with George, people on the trains were really chatty, yeah. and the lower down the country you got, everyone gets a bit more like tense know, and yeah, uptight. Panic, and today, goodness me, I know. very tense. Someone just snapped at Sharon for standing while she was trying to sort the tickets out. Anybody? Chill down, people, relax. Hey. 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 folks and uh, we'll see you in a minute. Just on our way to the northern line now which means going deep underground Emily. Deep underground. Think of it down here, kids. And George is not loving life, are you? Don't like it down here, feel the wind. Like Going through the tunnel. Don't you like the tree? Last time you was here, Tracy, you caused a big uproar, didn't you? You threw a jacket to George or Ben. It was a jumper. Right. And the timing was just off. Right. <laughs> what happened? I, I threw it to him here, but a train came that way and just went. And, and the, the jacket the went onto the track. Yes. We had to press the emergency. I'm going stop. There, look. And you had to uh, hold, you held them up, didn't you, for about 10 to 15 minutes around. There was some. <sighs> All because of you. My direction. Unbelievable. <laughs> Everyone shoves to get on, don't they? Yeah, I know. They've all got to get on. Thank you. 
Yeah. Moving on up. Hi. Moving on up. <laughs> oh, hello. Doesn't happen often. Tracy, you letting an old man sit down? What, you? <laughs> Anyone else? You let an old woman sit down, look. <laughs> That's better, isn't it? I love the noise these modern trains make, Tracy. Nice, yeah. Emptied out a bit now. Emptied out a bit now. <laughs> That's the heat of people. Everyone generates 60 watts of a pat energy, apparently. Like a what? Your eyes went big. Do it again. This is the sound of the underground. Right, so we're here in Kennington now. We're just going to visit Sharon's auntie, who we haven't seen for a while. And then afterwards, we're going to have pie mash, kids. Pie mash. Yeah, Tracy? Pie mash and yep. liquor. Hey? Yeah. Pie mash and liquor, yeah. So that's where we're ready for. So then we're going to go into London and find a street there somewhere. Uh, like a shopping street or something like that. Those are bikes around here, Sharon, isn't there? Look. And there, bikes everywhere. You can't drive anywhere around Of course you can't. It's all parking restrictions. Hey? Why did you put the camera on mum when you said there's loads of bikes around here? Those spikes? Loads of bikes. Loads of bikes. Look at you are funny. Tracy. There's a building. Yeah, look at that building there, folks, in the background. Look. There is a story behind that. Tracy, can I just educate you? That building there with the, with the fans up. When they built it, that was going to be for the air conditioning. Mm -hmm. And it's never ever worked. Oh. So oh, some designers designed that worth probably tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of pounds maybe. Never got used. Yeah. There you go. That's, that's the world we live in. Right, so we're around your auntie's house yes. now and your cousin. Yes. And uh, thank you very much for coming and inviting us. They've just told us that we're not invited around anymore. <laughs> Which, we've disrupted the household up anyway. So just to say a quick hello and thank you very much for watching everyone. We're going down to, where is it? Who? We're going to um, Manchester. Pine Mat Road. Yeah, we was going to go to Almond's, which is just okay. around the corner, which they introduced us to, actually. No, no, I'm doing it on purpose. How dare you? It's closed, it's closed now. So, yeah, that's the reason we can't be going there, otherwise are, Reedy and Susan them. would have been there. <laughs> and um, yeah. and you said we, we got to get a train, no, we a train to Elephant and Castle, walk to Elephant and Castle, then we got to get a 462. 453. 453. <laughs> Uh, to the underpass, and then it's up on and the 11 o'clock. Yeah, exactly. What an experience that'll be. <laughs> have you been up there? Have you, no. We've never actually been there ourselves. No, I only no? go by. Have you been there? there? Yeah. 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 Is it on par with almonds? I know you uh, like it, almonds. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's on par with almonds. It's, it's the nearest you get. I want some money from almonds. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to do a bit of shoplifting now, and then we'll see you a bit later on, folks. <laughs> see you later. They know all the best shops. <laughs> Here you go, look, we just come out of Irene and Susan's house. That's that building I was telling you about earlier on, folks. Look, them fans never work, look. Waste the money, that's what it is. Well, someone's makes money out of it, Sharon. I know. We're just doing a bit of a background walking down the little streets of um, Kennington at the moment, folks. Had a nice time. Oh, I love it. You haven't time. seen Auntie Irene and Susan for a long time, have you? Five years we worked out. Yeah, there you go. No, no, that's someone's house, James. Anyway. So we're going to walk now to the Elephant and Castle, uh, then on down to the Old Kent Road, and that's where Manzies is apparently. So we we'll see you when we get there. No, I'm, I'm starving. It'll be yours. Hey? Yours. I just love pie mass, George. Just look at that little house turned into a block of flats. Look. It's not a house. It's flats. Well, it's flats now, yeah. But look, old world, oldie world, isn't it? Look, the old tiled staircase there. Look, open lobby there on this big mansion block, I suppose. Look. Hey, a little bit of history there. Yeah. And what's this called? Penton Place. South East 17, folks. Look at that. Pullen's Buildings. Yeah. And the streets are so quiet. But they were saying, Reenie and Susan, parking here is an absolute ludicrous. And she got a couple of tickets the other day. A minute apart. Both for 60 odd pounds each. Because you're caught on CCTV cameras. It's not someone walking up and giving you a ticket anymore. You just drive into a certain area or down a certain road where you shouldn't be. And you're automatically sent through the um, ANPR, Automatic Number Plate Recognition. You sent a ticket. Great revenue stream, isn't it? 
Anyway, I'm not going to rant you. Onwards and upwards, folks. So people without gardens, folks, or whatever, need to put all their bins out the front. Look, sign of 21st century living here in uh, inner London, I suppose. We've just arrived at Manzi's Pie and Eel Shop. Right, so we're going in here. As I say, we've, we've normally been to Armaments when we've been in this area, but we're in uh, Tower Bridge Road at the moment. And um, what is that you said you saw in the window? Apparently, this is the oldest surviving eel and pie shop since 1872, I think. Is it really? 92, 92. Anyway, I want triple pie mash. Oh, here we go. Well, You're having us. pie yeah. mash. The kids may or may not have something. We're not too sure yet. We're going traditional, folks. Let's get inside. Nice. Can I have two pie, two mash and liquor, please? Very nice, Sharon. Should we get a, a sarsaparilla? Oh, what? Sarsaparilla. You can get one if you want. Yeah, Sharon wants to get one of them to try, so uh, a sarsaparilla. So we're going to have a little go at one of them as well. Oh, yeah, put it everywhere. Well, that'd be nice. Um, Brilliant. Thank you, my love. That'd be days. Put that over there, shall I? Go and take that over. Can I have three Fanta Zeros? Look at that. Look. How's that look, Tracy? Oh, it's amazing. Right, Sharon, you've got yours now. You've also got this drink here. Sarsaparilla. I never tried it right. before. Right, let's have a little go at that then. See what you think of that. It is a flat drink. It's not a fizzy drink, is it? What's it like? Oh, is it like the only thing I can think of maybe is um what's root beer? It's flat coke, it's not root beer, I love root beer. Right, let's have a little go. I've never had this myself. It doesn't smell of anything. Is it coke? No, it's got a bit of a fruity tang to it. I wouldn't say it's flat coke, shell. Yeah. It's got like a fruity tang to it. Love the chili vinegar. Okay. Like a weak vimto, Sharon. Right, so that's Sharon's double. Pie mash. She's going in with the uh, chili vinegar there, as you can see. She whacks loads on. You can taste it if you want, James. Have a little taste. Pepper, please, taste. Have a little drop. Thank you, love. What do you think of that? That's good, that's called. Nice? Yeah, it's good. And Sharon's going in again with plenty of white pepper, which we love, Sharon, don't we? Right, what do you think of this? We've not had it from here. Although we've had a Manzi's pie mash before in Sutton, I think, didn't it? Mm. Pie? Very good. A lot of people say, yeah, turn the pies over, don't they? And a lot of people pour the vinegar in the pie as well. There's different ways people eat it. We just eat it the way we've always ate it, don't we? Don't want something like that. Yeah? Can I have a go? Right, and I like lashings of vinegar. Again, the chilli vinegar. I literally drowned it in this stuff. And I'm going to try and do what I've never done before, Sharon. And that is what you've just done. Turn the pie over. A lot of people say do that, so I'm going to do that. And break it open, they say. Like that. And the only way to do this, in my eyes, is full metal jacket. So that's a bit of pie, a bit of liquor, and a bit of mash, covered in gravy. Oh. Mm. Yeah. You've got to have it with the vinegar on, folks. I know a lot of people say this is bland, but when you put loads and loads of vinegar on. And I'll also have, Tracy, the white pepper down. I did forget to put my white pepper on. So we're going to whack loads of that one as well. And that makes all the difference in my eyes. I'm going in again, Sharon. Going in again. There. Look at that. And I can see loads of pepper on that lot. 
Happy days. Oh, kick on a chilli vinegar there. Leave me alone. I'm going to eat this now. See you in a minute. You've nearly finished yours. Lovely. Two pies enough for you? Yeah, double mash side. I've got a sweat on folks. I just polished off three pies, double mash, double liquor. James didn't eat his pie, so I had that as well. And I also had half of his mash as well, so I've had about four pies, three mash. And I've also had their liquor as well, so I'm fully stuffed, I can't resist it. From ever down in the pie mash shop, I've got a rabbit. And I always have three pies now. This is an old traditional one. The old tiled walls there, and the, the bench seats, and the marble worktops there. And you can't ask me to judge it out of 10 because all these sort of established pie mash shops that have been about for near enough a century earned their place so they all got their tried and tested recipes so I'm never going to judge one against the other, I don't think it's fair to do that, uh, it's a 10 for me, I've always given a pie mash shop a 10, not like these newfangled ones, yeah? there's some new ones that have come out in there and uh, they're not the same. Did you enjoy it? Yeah. Well I like yours. Well I did enjoy it because I did have some. You liked the sarsaparilla didn't you? Time to go outside, what would you give it out of 10? 10, easy. Didn't easy even easy hesitate easy. there, did you? So there you go, folks. That was Manzi's Pie Mash Shop in Tower Bridge Road, I think, showing it, in London. Very tasty, very filling, and uh, very authentic as well. Right, we're just at the beginning of Tower Bridge, what your kids want to see. And have you ever heard that or seen them videos on YouTube and TikTok? about cats being frightened of cucumbers? Yes. Quite a few of them, isn't it? Yeah, is it a thing or what? I am sure. Because I, I've just I, come I, over there. Look, look over the road there. You've got the cat and cucumber all day breakfast and lunch place. Yeah. Perhaps it is a thing. What come first, that restaurant or cats and cucumbers? I ate the cucumber. Of course it did. <laughs> I don't know, actually. Maybe the cat from actually. Who knows? So we're know. just panning you around, folks. I don't normally like panning what around. And we are at the foot of Tower Bridge in front of us. So we're going to make our way over Tower Bridge. The kids wanted to go there, so uh, yeah, that's where we're heading. Yeah. Tooley Street there, Sharon. Ain't that where the London Dungeons was? Yeah, I remember that name from ages ago. It just amazes me how built up London is. Now when you go to um, cities like Paris, and all the European cities where they've kept their original look and preserved it, the historic values of it. But when you come to London, it's sacrificed the history all the way like America has done with modern glass buildings and high rise uh, tower blocks, all for corporations, not for living accommodation. And to me, it's just a shame. And then you've got to look for little bits of history in London like the bridge we're approaching now when they used to be the main part of the landscape they're now hidden amongst metal and concrete buildings all of different design there's no sort of natural design element anymore it's like a designer pays a company pays a designer to come in and design something quirky and unique without appreciating or fitting in with the local surroundings, especially of the historic bounds like London. Maybe we're at a point of change and uh, it's the way forward, who knows? I mean, everything's just a mass of noise and confusion. Amazing. 
not a place I'd want to live anymore, I'm afraid. Just coming up to the original Tower Bridge, not to com be confused with London Bridge, which is uh, a bit further down. And also the original London Bridge was removed brick by brick, and I think it's in Arizona, in the US of I. I went marching off in front, didn't I? Yes, yeah, Just having a little tour guide. Yeah, they want to go in the, uh, get the uh, bus, didn't they? What bus? Toy bus, we promised him. Oh, gone off. well, we can get another one. There's all the modern skyline now, as you can see, of um, modern London. And those buildings are so close together, people, that when you're walking amongst them, it's like twilight at um, ground level. Yeah. It goes yeah. dark, doesn't it, yeah. baby? Let's have a little look over there, folks. Look at that, look. The new London. Any little point of history, folks, look. Just to show people where they've been. Plaques now commemorate tourist spots for people to take pictures of themselves to show they've been to Tower Bridge, including our grandchildren. <laughs> Go on in. Stand in the middle. Thank you so much. Thank you. That woman could be Nanny Tracy, the one who was standing in the photograph with them. Yeah, that'd be Nanny. <laughs> that could be Nanny. Yeah, I did call that big building at the end there, folks, the uh, mobile phone. It's not. It's known as the walkie-talkie, actually. And uh, just down to the right of them is the uh, Tower of London there. As I did mention before, we've watched our previous videos. And look at these big girders, look. These uh, big metal hanging brackets from them towers supporting the the road structure of the bridge absolutely fantastic and all this original iron work here look at this look all cast iron look amazing built together like a Meccano set Sharon isn't it all them years ago oh, amazing how they've done it yeah and just look at that look at that nut and bolt there look going through there shall oh this oh, wow. this thing that big pin you can imagine that being hammered in all them years ago Someone was hanging off that nut once with a big spanner. Amazing, isn't it? Amazing. And that joint there, in very windy conditions, allows the bridge to move about a little bit. Amazing, isn't it? And all the ironwork there is all done in a leaf spring shock absorber, look, to absorb the uh, movement of the bridge. Absolutely fascinating. All these rigid rivets put in by hand probably hammered over, heated up and hammered over with big uh, mallets or jackhammers maybe, I'm not sure. What is it? And all the intricate stonework done by stonemasons, all taking pride in their work centuries ago. And the pierce of the resistance is that this bridge actually opens up in the center to allow large ships to come through like sailboats or whatever and uh, stops the flow of traffic to get the boats through and these two big mechanical road panels will lift up which you can see there let's try and get to them yeah this is the one that lifts up and the machinery form is in there and these will come up in the air both sides and allow vehicles to go through and this is where England had most of its trade a couple of centuries ago going up and down the river in very similar tugs to this bringing the wares from around the country still doing so now probably rubbish in them ones I would imagine shifting rubbish about and then of course you've got your city buses where you can go on to do a tour of the river 
and again when the weather's light like this it's quite a nice experience actually we have done a smaller one further up the river around the Richmond and Kingston area not down the main part of the river here that you can see this one is absolutely lovely craft there lovely views on top of the decks in old and new London historically in one journey what do you think of that baby? very good what a lovely bridge isn't it? what technology it's amazing isn't it? Have done it? yeah look at that folks look just looking up there you can actually pay to go up and walk along them gantries along there yeah and actually get a, a bird's eye view so to speak of Tower Bridge over there you've got um, Canary Wharf that's it so you've got Canary Wharf over there and every building along the Thames line there has been uh, modernised or rebuilt and there's no resemblance of uh, old London from 30 or 40 years ago when we were young Sharon and how we knew young during the war Sharon so for those of you that are interested to do that little tower bridge walk folks there's your price structure mostly for tourists I think that price is not something I'd pay to go on Sharon to be honest with you George has begged us not to go up there. <laughs> Why? Because it's too high. <laughs> so down at uh, the Tower of London level now. A couple of uh, royal cannons there by the looks of it. And just have a look at the bridge from uh, this side underneath. Just to let you appreciate what a fantastic structure it is. And very choppy the water. Probably quite deep as well. So this is the uh, lower entrance, Sharon, to the oh, Tower of London, which we're not going to pay to go in, are we? I don't know how much it is. So no. I'd love to go It'll in. It'll be a lot of money, wouldn't it? I've been in there when I was a kid, like I've you probably. Uh... Oh, hello. That's King it's Charles. It's really King Charles, isn't it? Yeah, there you go. That's a new painting, folks. Look. It's King Charles. Yeah, of course it is. So you get to sit on the throne as well, kids. Hey? It's like herding sheep, isn't it? <laughs> just got a picture of the three of them. There you go. Ready, guys. Say cheers. With a croissant in your mouth or a pan of chocolate, James. Pan of chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they've obviously got these thrones put in for the uh, coronation of uh, King Charles. There's a few of them along here which you can have your pictures taken with, by the looks of it. I don't know whether they're done by a local artist or what. What does it say about them here? Yeah? Oh, the schools have uh, painted them. The schools have painted them, Sharon. There you go. Local schools. So just a little bit of the history of the people who have been imprisoned in uh, the tower. Catholic priest John Gerard was imprisoned and tortured in the tower for being a spy on the orders of Queen Elizabeth I. How about that? And that there is Queen Elizabeth I. Him. He made a daring escape from the rooftop on the night of Octo 4th of October 1597. He made the successful escape climbing down the cradle tower by rope. He fled to a boat waiting by the wharf below. There you go. And as you can see from all that time ago, the place hasn't really changed at all oh, she's, she's, she's in all that time. It's lovely, isn't it? Yeah. Not and I just, I mean, I, no, that's not. Oh, I think <laughs> further down there is what you call Traitor's Gate, which we looked at earlier on from a distance. Let's have a look at that. And here you can, yeah, here you can probably see the arrow slits there, where they used to fire bow and arrows from, and they go on all the buildings there. They never had big windows back in them days. And I think coming up here was where we found uh, Traitor's Gate. It's been such a long time since I've been here, folks. So I may be wrong. So here you can see the middle drawbridge entrance, which is here, was built in 1834 when the Duke of Wellington was in charge of the tower. It was used to load military supplies onto ships from stores in the tower. And that there, folks, is what you're looking at, is that over there. And it's been now strengthened because a huge fire destroyed the tower's grand storehouse in 1841. And the uh, strengthened drawbridge can now carry the weight of a modern fire engine. There you go, that's, that's built there. Marvellous. <laughs> That's no problem. <laughs> Saved you reading it. 
<laughs> and there you go, that's what was building that time, look. But I'm sure further along, I'm not quite sure where Traitor's Gate used to be then. Whether yeah. water used to flow in here, I'm not sure. Oh, here we go, we're a little bit further up now, folks, and as you can see down there, this is Traitor's Gate there. That's where they used to bring the prisoners in. Yeah, 1280, look at that, look, amazing history there. Let's have a look at the signboard up here, Sharon. And it should be able to tell you a bit more about it there. You imagine the people that have been in there throughout the years, folks. Absolutely amazing. There we go, Traitor's Gate is the grandest and most notorious river entrance to the tower. Famous Tudor prisoners such as Lady Jane Grey is said to have entered the tower through this water gate. There we go, and then they was murdered. Or beheaded or whatever beheaded, yeah and that water link there should go right the way through underground here to the uh, the main river there and they used to come in there on barges or boats to their death there you go amazing history what you got here Shia? this is st thomas's tower which is Encompasses Traitor's Gate, that's what you're looking at here, folks. So this tower's originally decorated with gold windows, bars, and painted statues. They've all gone. They've all gone, aren't they? There you go. Amazing history. What now? Oh, right, okay. Luxurious royal apartments, folks. In the 1200s. You can't think how how old. How old? How old? The history of London is and the people that have been through these buildings or or looked at what we're looking at now over the years. Things are built to last then. Eh? Things are definitely built to last then. Well that's right. Compared to these I mean, modern... You're lucky if you get a washing machine last five years. Well it won't last five years, Shell, because they, they, they only last two years, the warranties. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. Look at that. All the money in there. I was gonna say it's the sort of thing where people throw money in, Sharon. So we're walking around here. And we're looking at stuff from 1200, the early 1200s. Are we going to be doing that when we're walking around the Shard and the places like that, or the Walkie Talkie building? Well, it's like George, like his grandchildren, isn't it? And then what they're yeah. walking around, these buildings will still be here. Absolutely talk. amazing. But look at that, that, them old, two old buildings there, with all that modern monstrosity behind. Yeah, so you've got a juxtaposition there, folks. There's the old buildings there. And looking over in the background over there, if I just zoom in through there. That is the new skyline which we've now adopted. It's a shame, really, because most European countries haven't done this to, on the extent we're doing it. Amazing. Yeah. We're just on the side of the uh, Tower of London now, and we just come to this bit, folks. Look, this is obviously the walkway in when you go into the Tower of London. But you've got that old wall there, the original wall down there. Look, and just behind them. You've got some, uh, which looks like stone lions and tigers and Just lions. lions and lionesses over there. But James, uh, George said what they were, they were there and they were they the prisoners in there were tortured by them. Oh, I don't know. That's <laughs> a good imagination, yeah. isn't it? But look at the side there, look, of all them little arrow slits in that uh, main tower there. The outer, the outer building. This, mo this must have been a moat all around here, Sharon, I would have thought, all them years ago. Amazing, isn't it? Oh well, there we go. Onwards and upwards, folks. We're just behind the uh, Tower of London now. You've got this little open area here, like a little sit-down eatery where you can have a picnic. Or failing that, you can buy traditional fish and chips over here, folks. And what's the prices like over here? £13.50, look at that. Amazing. And they're not the biggest of portions, folks, either. Tiny little portions, but that's what you pay for when you're a tourist in London. After that show, you can go a toilet in here, which is just off of it. How much per person? 50p a p. 50p a p. Did you not go then? No, I did not. You'd rather hold it? Yes. So there you go, folks. Have your food at an extortionate price, and then go to the toilet at an extortionate price. What's that? What's that, baby? Could have got him that one for like 99p. How much? 14.99. No, 12.99. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. 99 Look at that show, look. 22.99, look at that, look. Buckingham Palace, look. Historic London, eh? Although they're not bad price, no, but not the bad. trouble is, is that that's not the sort of mug I like, Sharon. Well, they're nice and I like a light mug. No, I like a heavy mug, Sharon. 
Yeah. All your normal key rings, yeah, folks, and stuff. Hey? 15 quid for a bottle of prime. 15 quid for a bottle? You're joking. 14 99 Unbelievable. What is the thing with that prime? Why is it so dear? Sharon, Tracy. Why is it so dear, that prime? It's normally two quid. 14 99 You've heard it here first, folks. <laughs> well, that was a quick visit, Tracy. Well, I just don't like it when people take advantage. Well, that's London for you, though, darling. Where's your nan gone? Your mum? Take it. Your nan? Your mum? Your mother? Nanny! Is, is, <laughs> hey? Oh, what's that? Look at this, we've just found this, look, folks. I didn't know that, look. The All Hallows by the Tower, founded in 675 AD, the oldest church in the, in the city. All welcome. A bit dark in here, folks. Wow, look at this. Let's have a little look up here, look, a little vegetable. Crypto Museum and Undercroft. Yeah, look, you've got a crypt down here, look. Let's have a look down there, shall we? This way. Wow, look at that little staircase, look. Wow, that's fantastic, look. Come on, down you go. Uh, Emily. Wow, look at this. And watch this here, look. These are the original Roman floors here. Look at that, look. Wow, that's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. This is the original Roman floor, Sharon. Look at that. Just up a little bit. Come on in. never been down here before. It's a little bit dark down here folks. You're right underneath now. Wow, look at this crypt. What are these little holes for in the walls here, look? There's the old skyline of London, which is totally different than what you see today, folks. So, just Sharon's just pointed out, folks, that all these little boxes here, as you can see on the walls, actually contain real ashes of people. Who they are, we just don't know. Amazing to see such history like this, this is and not having to pay for it. Hey, what's this, Tracy? Yeah, and walk through there. Keep going, darling. So quiet down here, isn't it? This old stonework in the corner there. Look. Wow, look at this. Well, we're definitely taking you on some journey here, folks. We didn't uh, think we'd be entering anything like this without having to pay any money for. What's that? Can you come down? Can you join the wall? Oh. Look at that. Look This is the chapel of St. Francis of Assisi, where the Holy Sacrament was held. Is it really? I don't know what's up here. Did he go up here? Wow, look at this little area here, look. Wow, look at this. There we go, look. There we go. Wow, look at this. How many people have sat down here throughout the years, folks? Can I sit on the bench? Look, how many people have sat on that? Can I sit on the bench? 
Yeah. What's that say there? St. Clair's Chapel. Yeah, I do want that. Wow. Come in there, follow your mum. Philip Thomas Baird Clayton. Obviously with his dog at his feet as well, look at that, look. 1885 to 1972, look at that. Amazing. And up there you can see the uh, pipe organ. Which I'm not sure if that would still be active now. But look at all these intricate marble columns, or stone columns. And they were just saying we heard the uh, chap talking about the blackness on these walls here and the ceiling, which was from one Sharon. World War Two, when it got damaged. When it got damaged, it damaged in the, the wall. And you can see the blackening of the original walls. Well, that was a nice little find, Tracy, wasn't it? Very interesting. Definitely that bit underground. What's that, Sharon? I don't know. There's a little hole in the floor there, folks. Not quite sure what what, uh, what that means down there, what that denotes. That was All Hallows by the Tower, founded in 675 AD, the oldest church in the city, right in the middle of this lot, folks. It's traffic. Amazing, isn't it? Right, onwards we go then. Have a little walk around, see what else we can find in this wonderful city of London. Right, so there we go. Here's the uh, foot of that big building which we showed you earlier on. What they call the uh, walkie-talkie. Look at the size of that, folks, look. How about that as an eyesore? Or modern art, as some people would call it. So again, looking at ground level, folks, you've got that old-fashioned church there, stuck right between them two modern builds there. Totally lost in the uh, eye line of the skyline, so to speak. Amazing. I mean, look how tall them buildings are there. Look at the little gap in between them, look. Amazing, isn't it? How they're built so near to each other. And all that weight on the old soil or clay of England, uh, London's uh, footing, so to speak, shall we? I didn't know what you said, love. I said how close them buildings are to each other. Yeah. And how they're all built, all that extra weight on the footings of London's yeah. uh, little footprint, so to speak. Look at that, look. Absolutely amazing. And you can guarantee... To know what? How many windows there How many? Who, who cleans them windows? That's what I said. How does it work? She said, well, you get a bucket and a jacket. Yeah. I said, you've got to be a good throat. But you can imagine that you've got underground uh, tube stations and you've got wires and things. And the footings for this old building there, for example, are going to be... I don't know how deep they're going to be. But imagine how deep the footings are for that thing. Amazing. And the different weight structure there, right next to it. Amazing, isn't it? What is that building? That, I'll tell you what that is, Sharon. That is what you call the monument. Of course it is. The station's called the monument. And is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I went up there when I was a kid. You walk up a big spiral staircase right the way to the top. And as you can see up there, you've got the, the, the platform which you can uh, stand out on, which is enclosed. And that top there, I think it's supposed to be gold leaf or covered in gold. But yeah. Look at that. Now I remember when I visited this as a kid, none of these, that were well, this definitely weren't here, none of this stuff. And I don't remember it being so enclosed. I don't know whether these are new buildings here or what. I think these must be, because they definitely weren't there when I was a kid. And it used to be free. Let's go and have a look, see if you have to go in there now. I know it used to be free when I was a kid. I'm going back 50 odd years now, so during the war. <laughs> yeah, there's a monument station, folks. God, it's been so long since I've been here. So long since I've been here. Just shows you. I don't know, I think the entrance must be around the other side. Let's have a little look. It tells you about it here. Yeah? Hold on. Let's have a little look. Here we go. The monument was designed by Robert Hooke in consultation with Sir Christopher Wren. It was built in 1671 to 1677 on the site of St Margaret Fish Street Hill. 
to commemorate the Great Fire of London in 1666. The fire burnt from the 2nd to the 5th of September, devastating two thirds of the city and destroyed 13,200 houses, 87 churches and 52 livery company halls. The monument was a freestanding fluted Doric col column topped by a flaming copper urn. It's 61 metres, which is 202 feet in height, being of equal to the distance westward from the site of the bakery in Pudding Lane to where the fire broke out. Its central shaft originally housed lenses for a zenith telescope and its balcony reached by an internal spiral staircase of 311 steps. There you go. That is the monument. So as I say, the last time I was here, it was free. But now you have to pay six pounds for an adult and three pounds for a child of five to 15. Yeah, that's the only entrance to it, folks. And that's the spiral staircase there. 311 steps all the way up, which we won't be doing today, I'm afraid. Yeah, it must have been about 50 years, Sharon, since I was up there. 50, yeah. Half a century ago, I was up there. You wouldn't believe that, would you? And the pair of us shout are still standing. Oh, did you catch your elbow? That's a bit of magic dust on it, look. Wingardium Leviosa, gone. Out, all gone. You happy now? Look, he's smiling, look. That's the power of her thought, Tracy, Sharon. And we're just going to jump on the train now, Tracy, to somewhere else. Who knows where that's going to take us? We're going to jump on the fun train. Yeah. Oh, well, folks, we're on the Oxford Street now. And as you can see, not a very pleasurable experience. Absolutely packed. All I want to do is find a toilet, go up for a toilet. So, uh, absolute madness here. This isn't my idea of fun at all. We're going to have to get out of here as soon as possible. See a bit of folks. And it's madness, isn't it? It's just horrible, isn't it? Sharon, not for us, is it? We seem to be going the wrong way. Of course we are. We're going against the flow of traffic, Sharon. Look, everyone's coming towards us. Unbelievable. Oh, we got out of the madness of Oxford Street. Yeah, you wanted to go to the toilet, we went in the Marks and Spencer's food hall and what you got? You got lovely cold water, you got that lovely fiery ginger beer sham yeah, which you like. It's not fiery, that's the thing. Oh, it's got an after kick. Yeah, yeah, it's quite Look what I've got. And just to show you folks, they're building again in every little spot they can in London. Look at that, is that a power driver? That Look at that, look, what's that uh, big rod on the end of that there? Look, which uh, digs it in the ground, I think. Amazing. Yeah, look. So we've nearly finished our journey on London today folks, we're just going to um, gather ourselves, have a cold drink, sit down. It's uh, 5 o'clock nearly now, we've got to be back at 7 o'clock, Sharon? Oh, 7 o'clock, I'll try and get yeah. King's Cross, so um, we'll see you a bit later on. Cool Britannia shop there folks, look, they've got a big mini in there, look. Amazing. This is the uh, House of Secrets there. I think it's a Harry Potter based place. Never seen this one before. Hit your own bleeping one there, shall it? Those wands, my friend, are possibly real. That one is 160 pounds. If you, you ain't having it. <laughs> and you ain't having it. <laughs> it's a joke. George, George, come here. There's a lovely selection of wizard's wands there. But you're not having it. But you're not having it because the wand picks the wizard, my friend. The wand picks the wizard. The wand picks the wizard. Here we are back at the uh, station. Sharon's gone for your old favourite, Sharon, haven't you? Yeah, but no noodles. What is this one? Same one. Uh, Sweet, Sweet chilli and chicken, chicken bento. Now, you had this before. Mm. 
And how much did this cost in here again? Oh, I can't 50, remember. Oh, 20 Eight pounds, pounds, 50 pounds. 7 95 7 95 And you can get it in, is it Tesco, Sharon? Yeah. For £4.50, wasn't it? Yeah. Is it still as good? Yeah, you like that one. I do. You had a pasty, didn't you? Yeah. What was it like? I've been looking at those pasties downstairs in that traditional pasty shop, folks. And what's put me off is the price before. They look good. They were £6.54 off it. Wow. £6.59. And I had one, and to be honest with you, it was listed as a traditional Cornish pasty. Yeah, very hot. It was very dry. I wish I would have shot, I didn't film it, I should have filmed it. It was very dry and also very, very peppery. You know what it reminded me of? A ginksters on steroids. So, would I have it again? No. No, I wouldn't. Yeah. You obviously like that again, Sharon, because you've had that again, haven't you? And what did you have, Tracy? Well, what you know, isn't it, Tracy? I got that, but I treated myself to a bit of sushi as well. Oh, dear. Oh, yeah. Sushi? Mm. And you got a bit of that as well, Sharon, which is very unlike you. Again, how much was this? You can't remember? Four pounds, well, That's not right. bad. That isn't bad, actually. And it's quite weighty as well, so... Same little babies that got me. Yeah. Anyway. And you've got the same as well? Yep. Um sweet chili chicken, isn't it? With Come rice. In. Go in. Full metal jacket. It's everything. It's gonna be warm though, isn't it? Yeah, go for it, go on. Hold on. I'm trying. Do the face. Do you want me to hold you up? <laughs> Oh. oh, Sharon, it's go on. spicy. Oh, oh Sharon. <laughs> I can't say that. That's <laughs> no. It's quite spicy. It's tasty, it though. Very tasty, mm. isn't it? Yeah, I don't know why Dad don't get it. It's why he don't learn. Ciao. I wanted to try that pasty. Now I've tried it, I won't have it again. Just like that chicken burger. Hey, I Leon, I'm really from over there, Leon. It's down there, folks. You can just see Leon down there. I was hankering after one of them chicken burgers for a long time. I had it. It was a big letdown. Anyway. I think we're going to finish the video here today, folks. Yeah. We've had a lovely day, folks, haven't we? It has, actually. Yep. And the time now is... Just coming up to 7 o'clock in the evening. Our train is at 7.30, Sharon. 7.30! And uh, we've just got to rough it out here. Because normally we'd be in the first class lounge at the moment, wouldn't we? Mm, yeah. I'm slumming it. Of course you are. So, thanks very much, folks. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to check out our other videos. And also have a little backlog and a binge watch of our videos. And I'm sure they'll enjoy it. Thank you. <laughs> See you in the next video. And until then, bye for now. Bye bye. Bye for now, folks.